Canada have advanced into the CONCACAF Nations League Final Four after a 4-1 victory over Honduras sees them joining the likes of Panama, USMNT, and Mexico this June in Las Vegas. After a brilliant performance at BMO Field against Honduras, seeing the goals come from the likes of Kyle Lerin in the 9th and the 12th minute, unfortunately missing that penalty to see him get that hat-trick, but it didn't matter as Canada still saw a goal from Jonathan David in the 50th minute and a goal in the 80th. 7th minute to wrap it all up from the Toronto boy himself in Jonathan Azorio with a very great finish and wrapping up a very good performance from Canada and himself. It was a brilliant performance from Canada last night. We rectified so many problems we had against Curacao that I had with the side, but we looked absolutely amazing. Whether it was as a whole or as our stars who all showed up to play, Canada looked absolutely brilliant in all parts of this match. Yes, we still conceded from a corner, from a set piece, but still, we were never in true danger of this match and of course I know there was a lot of talk out there last night of how Honduras looked so bad how they're mediocre average whichever word you want to use I know a lot of people were talking about that last night but the thing is the reason Honduras looked so bad was because of how good Canada looked Canada are now up there with the giants of CONCACAF we're up there now as the big three with Mexico and USMNT and nobody can deny that I truly believe that and there's a reason why Honduras looked so bad yes they weren't at their best fair play but Canada made them look so poor Canada made them look so bad and we're now at the point of a football nation as a Canada T side with how good we are as a team that we can make other sides look so poor that they that people are really talking about how they were so bad and it's a reason because of how good Canada truly were we went out there and beat a side that Canada's has struggled extremely much in the past and we absolutely put that to the sword we proved how good we are now as a football nation Beating sides and brushing them away like Honduras like this is a huge statement for Canada and it should mend off some of the demons from the past and give a lot of confidence to these boys as they head into June in a huge window where of course and you heard in all those interviews after the game John Herdman, Alfonso Davies, Jonathan Azorio, they all want to bring a trophy to Canada for our nation and I think they will have a great shot at it. Of course playing Panama in that first semi-final we have a great chance to end up in that final probably playing US mentee as Mexico have looked very poor this window and I think it's gonna be very interesting going into June how Canada will fare off but it's gonna be a great test and I'm very excited for it but guys we're of course here for the match reaction and it was a great game all around the pitch and I absolutely loved what we brought to this game of course even even though it was 4-1 our finishing could have been better we could have won this 5-6-1 we played amazing but a lot of problems I had against Curacao, whether it was not starting Tejon Buchanan, of course, due, due to that knock, whether it was the lack of creativity from the midfielder out wide, whether it was the formation, the setup, of course, a newer formation, whether it's Fonzie taking the corners, whether it was the lack of press and urgency on the transition, every single one of the things I had a problem with against Curacao were 100% rectified. And it was absolutely amazing to see because Herdman is such a brilliant manager and Canada played so well against Herdman. Honduras and it was an um, unbelievably professional performance against Curacao we saw a couple of days ago but they went into BMO and completely changed everything we saw Estacchio deliver an absolute dime to the back post in that corner kick for the likes of Kyle Lerin and I know you could say Fonzie takes them from the left and Estacchio takes it from the right but I, I really don't see why you can't have stacks taking it from both sides I get you need the the different kind of in swingers or out swingers, a fair play. But for me, I think Stax has the most consistent ball and delivery on him out of the whole side. And I know we don't have a more another left footer outside of Fonzie really that has that kind of delivery. But I think Estacchio has to be taking him from both sides. You've seen his delivery every time it's pinpoint, it's where he wants it, it's where you need it. Whether it's going to land on Larian's head, whether it's going to land on Jonathan David, Vittoria, Kennedy, he always finds his man and it's always an accurate delivery and dead dead ball into the box. And I think Stacchio has to keep taking those corners and I think it's a great sign to see that he delivered that corner. It was an assist, it was a beautiful ball and it was an absolute dime. As well as on the transition and press, Canada looked very good as we did have a lot of urgency this whole match. It was amazing to see Canada straight from the off, straight from the first minute, Going forward, pressing, getting rated at Honduras. As we saw, we scored in the ninth minute and the 12th minute. 
I don't remember a time where Canada came out in the first 15 minutes and actually showed some urgency, actually looked to go forward to score. We looked absolutely exciting right from the off, the full 90. I had a complaint with that against Curacao. That is just not like Canada. We don't come out in the first 10-15 minutes, whether it's 15-20 minutes, we don't do that. And it was huge and it was very exciting to see from Canada do that and come straight out from the off and really prove themselves and go out there early on and get it Honduras because once you do that you're making them get on the back foot from early if you get that early goal the whole f whole game flips and it completely did you saw Honduras go whoa we're not used to Canada coming out like this and, and it completely changed the game you saw them get scored in the ninth minute they're a bit shaken we scored another one then the game's over we just played our game and that's how we have to do every game off from the get-go and we played very well but also another huge point was the fact that we saw Tejon Buchanan I, I talked about this in the Curacao reaction. I knew I knew he was being rested for this match. And you can see when Tejon Buchanan isn't on the pitch for Canada, we kind of lose that element from the off. His creativity, his 1v1 ability, his dribbling, his accuracy on the ball, his crossing. You lose so much of that element on the right-hand side off the get-go for Canada. It is crazy to see. And he was unbelievable for me, I thought, against Honduras this game. Whether it was just playing some creative, creative balls or making the overlaps with Alistair Johnson, their connection is absolutely brilliant. It was just amazing to see Tejon Buchanan back in the side. You can see the effect he has in this team and it was absolutely brilliant. And the thing is, when you bring on Richie Lorea right, uh, later on in the match, he has the quick pace and change on the dribble, on the turn. And that is something Tejon Buchanan obviously won't have later on the match. I think Richie Larea is, of course, a bit quicker, a bit uh, faster on the spin, on the turn. And I think that is what I love from better Richie Larea. And bringing him on later in the last 15, 20 minutes to change a game is exactly what you want from Canada. And he has a great connection with Alistair Johnson on that right side. And I think that is what we need to keep going with. Tejon from the start, Richie Larea off, uh, comes on. Or we have other wingers coming through. We have the likes of Liam Millar. We have the likes of Theo Corbinu. Uh, Cole Yosho, if he commits to us. We have so many prospects coming up as well. That right hand side is going to be beautiful. But another thing, guys, I want to talk about here is the dual national issue for me. I was amazing to see Kyle Hebert come on. Of course, you could see he was a bit nervous, a bit shaky at first. But he calmed down. He played some nice passes, some nice one-twos. He had a couple nice runs down the channel defending. He had a couple of great defensive actions. And I thought he was very good when he did come on. Yes, he was a bit nervous and shaky, but who cares? It's his first Kahneman T debut. Everyone would be shaky, so I don't blame him at all. We saw that with Joel Waterman back a couple of months ago pre-World Cup when we played Bahrain. But Kyle Heber was still very good. It's nice to start to get get players cap tied but I really wanted to see Victor Latore come on for this game we we're cruising this was a game to do it or even bring on Dominic Zator it would have been great to see but oh well we got another window it's gonna be interesting to see when they get cap tied I really hope we can get them cap tied as soon as possible especially Victor Latore who has interest himself in Sudan it'll be very interesting to see what happens get some friendlies get a, get an easy couple of friendlies in there and let's see Victor Latore and Dominic Zator get cap tied but Ultimately, we're through to the Final Four where Canada is set to play Panama at Las Vegas in June against either the likes of U.S. Menti or Mexico in the Final where I am, of course, tipping U.S. Menti to win that with how poor Mexico have been this window, but it'll be a very exciting match come that time. Guys, let me know what you guys think of Canada against Honduras. Drop a comment down below. Of course, hit that sub button and drop a like, and I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.